Hi, I'm Matt and this is Not Enough Tech. Welcome to the seventh part and the last part of the uh, Node-RED uh, for beginners. In this part I'm going to be talking about tips and tricks that you can actually use with Node-RED to make your workflow a little bit better. So without any further ado, let's jump into it and let's see how we can improve our workflow. The first tip of the day is searching for nodes. Obviously you can filter the nodes in here, however, uh, scrolling down and looking for the nodes can be sped up by doing so. Press down the control key on your keyboard and then left click to bring up a node menu. And then you can add simply any node you wish by typing it. Now, if you end up uh, with a line being stuck to your cursor, just uh, click on control again just to get rid of it. And that's the first trick of the day. Now, since we are doing some cool stuff, how about enabling and disabling flows? Now, you can do it in a couple of ways, but this is one of the coolest way uh, to do it. Um, first of all, you're going to need a controller. And this controller basically is going to store the value of, in this case, true or false. So I have two inject nodes in here and basically I've changed this to a global and I've named it controller and it's gonna take the value of the payload, so true or false. Now, based on this, I'm gonna use the switch node um, to be formatted this way. I've set it to global, I've named it also the same way, controller, and it's only passing information through if that value is true. So I'm just going to test it here. Here, this is what happens if I'm gonna to switch to the debug. Uh, if I'm gonna click on here each time, uh, the timestamp is being passed to my debug menu. Now, if I'm going to deploy this, set it to false, you'll see no matter how many times I click this, click, this message is stop and it's not going through until I click on true and reset it. And now the message is coming through. Now, you can set the value of this global controller via MQTT, via HTTP post, you name it, it can be a timer. But this is a great way to interrupt a very big flows in a very simple way so you can have uh, some kind of toggle. Now the next item on the list I want to talk about are the text labels and setting colors and labels dynamically. So if you can see here I've got a couple of computers listed here and they all have text labels and the labels change color based on the status. So if the device is online it's green, if the device is offline it's red and here how to accomplish this in a very simple way. Now, if you're gonna go to device statuses in here, you'll see that each device has two nodes, one for color mapping, that's a function node, and obviously the text, the dashboard text node. Now, color mapping, it's a very simple case of switch, uh, which checks the payload. If the payload is true, I assign green color. If the payload is false, I assign red color, and the color is stored in the property message.color. And obviously there is a payload, which is, uh, in the case of true it's online and in the case of false it's offline there's a default one as well just in case uh, I'm unable to obtain any status and that will set this to gray and not set now to pass this information forward and to use it in a text node we have to wrap it in a HTML so with the HTML we have to define the color and we do this by uh, using this tag so we have your font color equals and then curly brackets and the message color and then if you want to put, pass your payload, you do it the same. And then you strip the uh, font tag by ending it. And that's pretty much how you define the color in the um, text node. Now, when creating a flows, it's a good practice to make a lot of comments uh, telling basically what you've done. It's great to read the flows like that with comments when you download them from the internet, but it's also a brilliant idea if you want to modify your flow that you've created a year ago and you don't exactly remember what kind of values it should take. So uh, leaving the comments or comment node, as you can find one in, in the list in here, it's great for that. As you can see, I've just commented out this flow. This is a flow for writing credentials. If I wanted to add a little bit more information, I could do by double clicking of, uh, on that node. And this is one to serve credentials. And that's for obviously for this node. And another thing you can do, for example, if you go to Ironman notifications, if you double click on that, you can add more stuff to description. And in the description, I've put basically 
how to use this flow and to what's the MQTT message uh, should be like to make it work. So never underestimate the power of the comments. Now, since we're talking about uh, saving things for later and remembering stuff, uh, there is another thing you can do. You can start building your own library and you can start building your code library or you can start building your own um, flow library. Now, if you select a couple of nodes and you want to reuse them later, you can obviously go and copy and paste them between tabs. But once you've got a lot of these, then it's very hard to find a specific section of the um, flow that you want to copy. Now, and you can export this to your library. So just go to select the nodes, go to export, hit the library and then just name it. And now that when you want to retrieve a piece of a flow that you've saved previously, just go to import library and I've got some credentials in here. And that's basically how it works with flows. And let's take a look at same at the message or at the function node, sorry. So you'll notice that you have the library in here and you can save the code or wherever it's in, written here to your library, or you can um, open something that is already stored. I have a JSON folder in here, and I have my JSON script in here that I can load into this function node. That way, you can s quickly bring uh, the snippets of the codes back to the function node, and you no longer have to look for the correct node to copy the code. So these were the tricks for you. You can find them in a written form at the bottom in the description of this video. And this is the last part of this tutorial. So if you missed any of the parts, check the descriptions as well, because you're gonna find um, links to the other parts of this guide. As usual guys, thanks so much for watching and thank you to my Patreon supporters. If you want to get any notifications about my uploads, etc., just follow me on social media uh, of your choice. You know how to use YouTube, you know how to send a like, etc. Et so I'll be teaching you this. We'll see you in the next video. Until then.